actually. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming today um, we're to the artist talk for this current show. So we have Ruslan Kais, Magda Vitali, and Jerry Tu. They're going to speak about their artwork on display. So each artist will give a you know a statement about what they do, and then hopefully talk about how the show uh, itself and how the work bounces off one another. So who wants to go? First, please. Of course, ladies. Of course, ladies. All right, so let's give the three artists a warm. <laughs> so I want to just say, first of all, how grateful I am to Tina and Mike for having this place and for asking us to have me in this show together. And I feel like it's a really a strong show, a real impact and uh, the colorful and, and uh, the way it's hung, leading from one to the other really works. I mean, they just have great, a great taste. Um, so that's uh, what I think about the show. So then I, I did you, would you like me to speak a little bit about my process and, and where I'm coming from? I wrote down a few notes um, just about kind of where I'm coming from. And, and I have a passion for nature. I think that's, so Sojourns for Nature is really a wonderful place for me to be in life and wonderful name for this show. Um, the abundance of nature at this time of year is really blowing me over. How the growth of the time that this show has been up, just having the earth put forth this wonderful uh, abundance for us and for us to be able to feed off of it um, and, and bring it into our paintings. And our paintings are, are, are the reflection of, of nature. Um, it's really hard for me to speak about my work because if I could speak about it, I wouldn't do it. And, uh, and I, I really hope, hope that the paintings speak louder than words because words really can't describe uh, the visual products that we have here. Um, so for me, I, I do yoga and I do meditation and, and, and be in nature, just soaking it up. That seems to be what leads into my work. And then I go into the studio and, and really put it out as much as I can. And I think it's really scary a lot of times to start out with the, the white void. So. Um, I start to put the paint out and get into the process, and I love to play and dance with the, the paint. So get the brush and, and really let the brush move. And once the brush starts to move, then I then we come into the process, and, and it, it, it seems to move along in the, in the work. And so much of the time when I um, say, "Oh, this is this painting sucks," I'm just I'm going to go. But I'll just stay for a few more minutes to do the, then the painting comes to life. And that's some of my best work, I think. Um, so that, those are the things now. Let's see. Oh, oh the, 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 I think when we talk about our work, it's a really vulnerable th place to be. And uh, that's, that's really hard, I think, to, uh, to be in that place. Um, and, and get a voice around it. And then the other thing that I, I want to speak about, I think, uh, I know a lot of artists struggle with, with uh, the balance, the balance in our lives. And uh, I'm, I'm balancing family, home, travel, um, relationships, and the art really seems to be, because it's about me and it's, and it's something really deep inside it seems to get second place a lot of times and so that's that's my struggle is to really give commitment and give time to this this piece which i love to put out into the world um so i think that's oh the other thing is the voices that come in um <laughs> all the time um, you know all the time 
and there are voices in my head. I've had a lot of structure in my life and a lot of expectations and the rules. So that, those are always there. And I have a big sign in my studio that the judge is Tiger Food. And uh, that, that judge is always there with me. And, uh, and so that's, that's another real struggle to, um, to get beyond the judge and really um, be solely myself in the work. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs> I'll go near this. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to thank Tina and Mike for inviting me. I'm very excited about this gallery. It's been wonderful for Philadelphia artists. You've really showcased all of them. The best. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope it continues and that it's a great success. And um, I really hate talking about my work. <laughs> I never feel that it's finished. And I really want the viewer to uh, look and uh, see what he finds in the work. And then I feel that it's finished. <laughs> so, um, inspiration comes from nature. And I've also had uh, experiences with uh, beautiful textiles growing up in my home. It's a memory that uh, follows me. <laughs> and so, um, I feel that the work is a diary. Although it's private, we don't really know what it is, but I know. <laughs> and so, um, you know, the uh, inspiration is as I said, nature, and I would like to, I would like to curb the urge to copy. I can't paint uh, representationally. I have to carry the memory into the studio, and that's where I start to make marks, and uh, the marks tell me where I'm going. <laughs> It's all very intuitive. I'm um, a very serious gardener. I've been gardening almost my entire life. And um, I guess a lot of the work comes from the garden. And it's, I've discovered it's a great metaphor for life, the garden. It, uh, it has sorrow and joy and horror. <laughs> if any of you garden, there's horror in the garden. <laughs> and disappointment. But most of all, it's incredibly beautiful. And so that drives me. So uh, I don't know. I hope this is a, gives you an idea of what I'm working with. <laughs> So you don't work from reference? You, it's all... I, it's the memory. Mm. So long? yes, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm in the garden mm -hmm. all the time. So, so you know, it's a trace. memory. It's a memory that I carry. <laughs> and then and you so go back I and work in the studio and I make marks and I try to be very careful not to get too too involved with the image. And so imagination is very important. And you, Jerry, are you in the landscape or are you in the studio or both? Sometimes when I've been outside, I get really, I get really annoyed with people asking questions <laughs> and stopping because once you get into your process, then it's such a distraction. You know, I love children, but when they come up and start to ask questions, then it's really hard. And um, I did hear of a man, I read about a man 
and or I saw a picture, anyhow, he had a car, an old car, and he put the, uh, all his stuff in the car and went out and set up his easel and started painting. And when the people came and asked questions, he would give them a brush and let them paint the car. <laughs> well, that's a really great way to do it. I don't have a car that I can do that. <laughs> But it would just, I mean, it would give them a chance to be in their, theirs with you. Yeah, so I love to paint around with people, too. I like to do that. I and mean, it's not always solitary in the studio. Okay, I'll paint out oh, yeah, plain air, but that's sort of private. I wouldn't think of showing them. <laughs> and then you go I do. back and forth with watercolor. So I go, that's right, I do watercolors. That's a break. Mm -hmm. you know, I do oil paints. And it's a nice, you know, it depends on how I feel. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when I go to the studio, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I just go in and I start making marks. And then it tells me. <laughs> it tells me what it wants to be. <laughs> so it, uh, it's like magic. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it gives me anxiety. <laughs> It's also it's not, wonderful. If it's not working, <laughs> the magic. <laughs> you know, it does. It gives me anxiety, but I love that. I love not knowing. Mm -hmm. It's like I don't know where I'm going. Usually my life is very structured. And mm -hmm. So this is my wild mm -hmm. side. <laughs> <laughs> and then the surprises that happen. It is. It's, it's a surprise. all the surprises in the mystery. Yeah, it's wonderful. How about you, Rusty? Well, it's very really interesting because I was listening. Uh, and um, it's funny how I use the same vocabulary to when I'm talking about my words as uh, my distinguished colleagues are. They are born here. Because especially I also look at, um, I had one motto about magic is a key word. Key word. There is have to be something magical happen in the painting. It's often illogical, it's often coming unexpectedly. And yet it's kind of the key element without which one it just there is something happening, just like a touch divine intervention, you know, touching when just let's just like cloth and some pigment become to be a painting. And it's uh, I think it was Mike and Tina intention. He presented three artists who are very different in the age, background, uh, their development, and yet we're all dealing with a very similar problem, with a very similar uh, ideas. We're all inspired by nature. We're all taking a different interpretation. Each of, the, each of us do not talking about direct, direct uh, um, visualization, the direct things. Everybody dealing with its own uh, with, own, with own view, everybody, all, everybody filter. His, it's not, not what I want to say something bad about for presentation of it, but each one who presented here trying to put slightly personal uh, step on uh, on the reality. What what we try to what 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 we are trying to produce on our canvases have a little bit more personal view. I am probably the more from the point of uh, painting, I am probably the, the most direct. I mean, maybe I'm, because I'm larger, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I eat a lot, I paint a lot, I, I use huge palette knives, uh, I buy the paint by the uh, two pound jars, and, you know, you just, just, just moving them around. But um, in the end, I'm looking for the same thing, for a, for a sensibility, for unusual, for unusual effect and for a magic. Uh, usually everything what they start have a almost precise place in nature. I can show you 99% of my paintings uh, have specific place and a specific time, which I was drive by and pass by numerous times and see just like and when it's starting to leave, leave some kind of residue and you kind of see the architectural structure, yep, that's very well known ready for a painting. I usually don't do any preliminary studies. 
everything I kind of developed this technique of uh, uh, going with acrylic on unprimed canvas. And this kind of, um, because I always can kind of cheat to put oil on top of acrylic, it gives certain amount of freedom. And yet it just feels right there, uh, element of pushing, pushing paint into the canvas, in a prime canvas, how, how it's just like, how raw and direct canvas take the paint, acrylic paint. Uh, it just feels right. <laughs> and I'm very happy with uh, my continue to choose this one painting because this is for, this is the last the, the, the last painting from the series which I um, started to go a little bit more abstract in order to we all trying to push as an artist we all trying to push ourselves to a certain limit and um, somehow being from the Soviet Union I'm slightly vaccinated against of uh, realist realistic painting I mean. Social realism, there is somewhere, somewhere, I was got vaccinated against this. But don't get me wrong, I admire the representation of painters greatly. I wish I could be more like them. But unfortunately, <laughs> I have slightly different DNA. So when I started to push, when I started to think about what can I, how can I push my painting forward? Can I make them more? I don't know, I don't want to say age because I'm not, I will never. I'm, I'll never, I never be avant that. But uh, try to push it a little bit further to have my own personal evolution as an artist. Uh, I started to gravitate toward abstraction. And then I had a series of the uh, going oh, black and white, which is just like almost for me, it's just like almost a discovery of totally different uh, era. And um, I like think my because this is my last painting. I really like what Mike and Tina saw the continuation of where I'm going and kind of give it a sort of, <laughs> sort of way of approval. Because for me it's more uh, it's more to intuitive things. Because sometimes as an artist you're dealing with the no matter how abstract you push them, you're still dealing with the images. And sometimes images they come and haunt you until uh, until you put them on the canvas. They literally haunt you for a certain, <laughs> for a certain period of time. And um, I really like this direction, but it's also always present the challenge because it's very really easy to drown on the sea of the big splashes and, uh, and the big bird. There is have to be some uh, kind of uh, compass or some kind of anchor or some kind of, I don't know, a lightning rod who gonna keep you, you know, as an artist, do not to lose, do not lose your way. I don't know where I'm gonna be, or where I'm gonna go from there. I'm gonna go larger, I will probably, it seems like I'm finishing one chapter and another chapter is not, uh, not open at. Uh, I, it's very scary to become, I feel, uh, like I'm getting more and more abstract and it's kind of very scary. Because first of all, like, like you're going to be, oh, the abstraction artist. Oh, it's going to be another strike artist. Or oh, another, another square artist. Or oh, it's going to be, you know, all these abstractions have, it's extremely difficult to do a good abstraction today. Just because so much was done, what internet has to be done, you really have to develop some kind of new technical trick or this kind of something happens, very magical, very unique have to be happen in order to do a good kind of now set painting which people will not say, oh, this is this is this or this is this or this is so or this is so. I think this is a kind of succeed on this one. Uh, I don't know if this is uh, if I'm gonna do this for five or six years in a row. I I, I don't know how it's gonna happen. Because another what challenge abstract painting present? There is no uh, rules of the law. It's he said, she said. You know, I think this is a good abstraction. Some people say this is a bad abstraction. How do you sleep with, How do you talk to yourself? Convince yourself that this is a good painting. You know, when you, when you the, the more the more you fall back to the representation of when you're starting to feel it's almost all the restrictions which uh, representational painting brings you, also have a kind of warm and uh, secure feeling. 
because you know this is the rule of the composition this is how this weighs, how this, you can see this, you can see, you can see this person knows what composition is, this person knows what uh, color it is, he knows anatomy, look, he knows anatomy, he put eyes, you know, on the line, and you know, ear in the right place, but what the heck is it? It's a slip, flip, flash, slip, slip, I'm looking at them just like, oh my god, this is a first mate, you can do it in 40 years, and somebody can go, meh. <laughs> I don't know. This is this is the heaven and this is the torture of being an artist. <laughs> that, that's pretty much it. What I can tell you, what I can say. Hopefully I'll do you know just every time every, every time you have uh, every morning you wake up and say, I'm gonna do it, something good. And usually it doesn't happen. <laughs> but then there is always tomorrow. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> I don't know. I take Mike and Tina again. Uh, for me, uh, when they invite me, it was just like a, uh, honey on my old wounds. When you get invited to the court, when you get invited to such a beautiful gallery, without solicitation, without chasing uh, gallery owners with the portfolio and trying to say, when you just get a kind of, listen, would you like to participate in the show? It's just like, it's an ecstasy. And thank you very much for this uh, extended moment of happiness, <laughs> which I experienced. Thank you to you, Mike, and thank you to you, Tina. <laughs> Jerry, I'm just curious whether you execute your paintings all at one time or do you go back in? Not that it matters, it doesn't at all, whether it's executed at one time or whether you work at it over time. I'm just curious, personally. I, I have gone into uh, to paintings again, and uh, it's, all, it's almost like an old friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, none of these are, are, have I gone into. But it's really hard for me to do it. Uh, to go into it. Sometimes it works. Mm -hmm. um, I find that I'll, leave, I'll try to leave an area that I like in it, you know, and then that, you just can't do that. You have to put the whole thing up for grabs. Right. <laughs> these, I didn't say, too, but, um, that these of the Avon War were done in the, in the river. Yeah, in Ireland. And uh, Bianca was the cook. So over there, so we could just eat, sleep, and paint. It was really a, very, very much of a treat to be able to just paint. Yeah. yeah so. Feels like that. Okay, well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for coming. And the artists will hang out, you know, for a while and answer your questions. We also have an opening next door from two to five for our collective show. I'd like to uh, just thank the artists again. Thank you.